retirement. I mean, you're just 27. Normally, ba, uh, for polo golfers, what is the retirement age for that? Well, they're like maybe 30, 35. Um, right now, the French guy is still jumping, and he's already like 37. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty long career. If, you know, you're, you're always motivated, but as I said, you know, the sport is not easy, and it takes a lot. And, uh, me being far from my family doesn't make it easy. So if you're 37, you're going to compete. Pa. Ibig sabihin, meron ka pa almost 10 years. A decade of, of doing this. <laughs> uh, it's a hard question. Um, right now, I'm focused on Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I really want to have a good result there. Um, I know how hard it is to be to achieve what I want to achieve. So we'll see. Um, I mean, as long as I'm having fun enjoying it and I know I can dedicate myself to the craft, then yeah, I'm going to keep going. But, the moment I realized that, you know, I, I can't keep my promise anymore, I think that's going to be a good time for me to move on. Earlier, like, I was going to the EJ about, uh, of course, he just won his Asian Games gold medal. And I asked him, when are you going to start preparations for the Olympics, Paris 2024? Because he was eating some chicken wings in the back. <laughs> and some fries, and I was wondering, okay, how long can he, can he eat this? And he said, six days. So in six days, he's going to be locked in, preparing for his next goal, which is, of course, Paris 2024. Man, your dedication is, is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it, so it takes a toll sometimes. <laughs> Alright, uh, as a young kid who came from Tonto, Manila, I watched a lot of your interviews, you uh, it, that it's hard for a kid who comes from that type of area to get into pool vaulting, but you were lucky because your parents were athletes, so you played ground ball, the King Rizal Memorial. Yeah. At what age did you realize that, you know, maybe you could follow in your parents' footsteps and become an athlete as well? Um, sports was a platform for me to get better education. That was how I kind of got into it a little bit more, like more seriously, slowly and slowly into it. But then, um, 2017, you know, I, I told my ACL that uh, it just so happening very old and substandard pitch. Um, I had six months to kind of ponder and think about, okay, am I going to continue or not? I think that's when I kind of diverted from what my dad wanted me to be and what I actually wanted to do. Um, that's where I realized, okay, I really want to be an Olympic. I really want to pursue this. I really want to, how to say, hammer it down to give it a good go. And yeah, and long story short, I'm still here. <laughs> Okay, quick question. Bakit siya tinatawag na pit? Kasi diba, when you think about pit, parang yun yung hinuhukay, diba? But like, the pit is like where you land, right? When you, when you catapult yourself. Because the whole thing, uh, back in the day, uh, they actually, yeah, they, they dig a hole. And they dig a pit, and there's like scholars. That's why it started to be called a pit. But then, when Athens started to be higher in technology, recently improved, you know, the landing area became multiple different terms. Landing area, landing pit, landing foam, it's, it's been a lot, but I, I, I'm i used to following the landing pit. Okay, so, 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 so sa mga nang yun yung reason kung bakit uh, landing pit or pit yung tawag doon. Sa mga gagawin ni EJ, of course, partnership with Catapult. Alright, um, Chiang Kai-shek High School, um, recently you had a home coming there, they said they're going to support you with your cause in the Olympics. I don't know what to say, you're going back to these places that have shaped your journey, shaped your career, your high school, Shang Kai Shek, and of course, USD. What, what can you say about everybody, all the organizations who have been there with you throughout your entire journey? When I walk those streets again, I just remember how far Things have gone, and I'm um, very thankful of how I was raised. You know, it's, uh, it's not just a single thing that happened. It's not something of, like, in South Africa, you're world number two. It was a constant progress, and there's a lot of people around it. There's a lot of people that helped me to be where I'm at now. Shape the way I see things and the way I see the world. And I'm um, very blessed to be surrounded by such incredible people. And um, being able to give back and be back at the same things and tell you that they're proud of you. That is a different kind of status that
every time you break a record, like in one of your interviews, tinanong ka, what's your biggest achievement so far as a pole vaulter? And you said when you became the first Pinoy medalist at the World Athletics Championship. So, that, so that's the peak. How, how, how do you bring that record, that personal goal that you established for yourself? What is it your sights? Oh, I think that was an interview back in 2022. Uh, I think the best one I would say is the 2023 year. Uh, we became the first Asian ever to jump six meters. So it was the first medal in Worlds back in 2022, 2023. You know, here we are, the first man to break in Asia, a uh, six meter barrier. What about your coach, Coach Vitaly Petrov? Obviously, your, your parents were your first coach. And now you have Coach Vitaly, ano naman ang sasabi mo sa contributions niya sa career mo? That guy has made me to who I am now. Um, the first year I was in Italy, I was just jumping five meters. Literally a meter after. Um, and now we're finally, you know, um, one of the best I've ever done in sport. I definitely wouldn't be here. I couldn't even imagine to be in such a position in, in my career that this would be possible. Me and my dad, the way we dreamed was, I would peak at maybe 5.510. And all the, the motivation of all our training was to break that five, five meter national record back in the day. And now, um, yeah, uh, Vitaly definitely opened my eyes. He taught me how to be big and showed me what it takes to be there. All right, let's talk about Paris 2024. In six days, you will be starting your journey towards Man, that that uh, I'm excited for you. Uh, how do you think the journey will go, and what do you envision for yourself next year? Oh, uh, to be honest, I don't want to be back yet in, the, in that zone in um, way, but I know what it takes. Like I said, you know, um, there's a lot of things that I still need to do, and uh, need to be disciplined in the way I approach things. Uh, when it comes to Paris, the moment I step on the track, we're gonna fight for that goal. I know it's going to be tough, I know it's going to be uh, uh, one heck of a battle, but that's why I stick around, that's why I decided after Tokyo that I'm going to be here, that's why I kept doing my best, that's why I keep fighting, because I have a week of prevention when it comes to Paris. And we're so thankful for that, EJ, that's why everybody is here today, joining you in your journey, sharing your story with the rest of the world. So again, we're going to have to see EJ of Vienna for everything he has done for the country and everything he will continue to do. Now we open the floor to the members of the media. Well